Welcome to another edition of It's All About the Dogs. I'm your host, George Philip Quinlan, and today we're going to be talking about car safety for temperatures and for other issues for transporting your dog. Today in Maine, on May 4th, it's 80 degrees. We went from winter to summer and over the weekend. So this was a perfect day for us to be out here and help you understand how dangerous it can be uh, to have your dog with you if you'd like to travel with them. This show is for people who compete with their dogs, for people who have service dogs, and for the owners who just love having their animal with you. Um, I want you to think about that when you take your dog with you uh, for errands around the town, whether it's uh, going to the post office or things like this, how long the dog's going to be left in the car and how the best, safest way to transport them is. Right now we're monitoring the producer's car. We put a, a unit um, in his car about 10 minutes ago and when we started it was 75 degrees in my vehicle with the air conditioner on. I then put it into his car and it is now 102.6 degrees in his vehicle and it's 86 degrees outside. This is sitting in the sun now and it's monitoring both in the vehicle and outside shows you this has been maybe 10 minutes it's gone up that much and if you go in to do an errand into a, uh, a store and you get tied up because of a line or something like this what starts off really short time of 10 15 minutes and it's up to 102 already you've now reached your dog's body temperature and the dog's going to start heat overheating rapidly so let's talk about what we can do to make life safe First of all, if you don't have to take your dog with you, I don't care how much you love having your dog with you and you want to go do errands on days like this or even 70 degree temperature days, reconsider leaving the dog home so you can get your job done and come home to a happy dog who's, who's, who's um, going to live a long, healthy life. You take the risk when you leave your dog in your vehicle for damage. I don't have any gauges this, this time. I decided not to use any uh, props to show you how fast the temperature goes up in your car. The easiest way to find out how fast the temperature goes up in your vehicle, go sit in your car, shut your windows, or crack the windows just a little bit and see how hot it gets. It hurts when I watch people leave dogs in the cars with the windows cracked, they go into a restaurant, they come back out, and before they get in the car, they open up all the windows. What does that say about the way they look at their dog? Oh, it's safe. We have the air flow in there. It's not enough, folks. You need to protect these animals. They, they don't sweat like you and I do. And if you're gonna open the windows up as soon as you get in your vehicle, that's telling you it's too hot for your dog to be in there. The way I travel, and I recommend traveling, is I like traveling with crates. Now, my dog car is set up for a dog. And if you're a competition dog trainer uh, or in, in any form, then you know about crates. You know the, the, the effects of having a nice crate in your vehicle and how wonderful it is. I recommend the very kennels or the airline kennels uh, over a wire crate. The wire crate may give more airflow, but if somebody hits you, you've got no protection for your dog. So the airline crates are the best way to go. And I'll show you what my crate is a little bit later. So. Notice I have all the windows down. If you have a sunroof, I would definitely open up the sunroof because the sunroof lets the heat out. Again, you can do this if your dog's in a vehicle. I mean, uh, I apologize. If your dog is in a crate, you can open your windows. But if your dog's loose, now you run the risk of something else happening. So again, consider this. Also what I have over here is I have a little lock on my door so my door acts as a, a vent so I can still get air, air circulation in. These are fantastic little units. I'll take it out and show you. It just attaches to my door. I can actually lock my door and, and that'll stop anybody from opening the door up to get inside. And so it acts as that sense, as an extra lock. And when I unlock my car, it comes, opens up. And I'll show you how it connects. This is very popular in Europe. We're not doing an um, infomercial here for this company, but if you're interested in about purchasing one of these and you can't find one online, uh, give us a haul and I'll help you be able to find it out. But if you Google, you can find these car locks. So what it does is it opens like this, and there's a hook. It hooks on, and then you turn it. So it locks into place. Leave this in the position. So when I shut the door, it locks right into the hand where the door handle is. Okay, let's move out to the back and I'll show you the back. I have a larger one on the back on the back door. 
And again, I'll show you what this looks like. They come in variety of sizes. Uh, this one, I believe, is 12 inches. I, they're 16 inches, and they go up to 21. So it just unscrews, and then you put it in, and you screw it back up so it locks into place, and this latches in. Let's show you what it looks like. Again, I reach in, open the door. There's the lock. I can leave it there if I want, but if I'm gonna just coming in to get something, but the idea is I can remove it pretty quickly. And again, it latches the same way this hooks onto this. The benefit is I can get airflow through my vehicle if I have to stop. I travel a lot with Merlin and we compete sometimes or we're working or we're at seminars or workshops. So my dog, I wanna make sure he's safe. I went with an aluminum kennel. It stays cooler in the hot weather as opposed to anything else. It's one of the coolest ones that I found on the market. What's nice, it does have a lock. So if I have to leave my dog for a moment to, um, and I'll make sure I'm in a shaded area, but I can just very quickly lock the door and I know my dog is safe. Nobody's gonna release it. Some organization, there's an organization out there that thinks that it's inhumane to create a dog and um, they've been known to show up at dog events and release dogs from kennels and I wanna make sure that um, my dog is safe or somebody's not going to steal my dog. Again, if you have a show dog, um, or a competition dog, these are a fantastic way to go. Again, you give me a call, the name is on the front, you can look it up yourself. A um, uh, lot of airflow, very light, easy to maneuver, and it stays cool. Another thing you wanna make sure that you travel with is lots of water. And they make these um, uh, pans with a little flat side, so I can um, open it up. Wait. Hook it right onto my, my door. And one of the exercises that you really need to think about is car safety. Again, is teaching your dog not to jump out of the car just because the door opened, not to jump out of the crate just because it's open. I want my dog to wait, wait there until I call him out. So now my dog has water. If I have to go into a building for a moment, uh, I know my dog is safe. I come back out. Now, remember this vehicle is set up as a dog vehicle, and I understand that not everybody is going to have a vehicle they can, they can do this with, but if you, if you do, this is the safest way to go. Whoops, there it is. And now it's safe, we have airflow. If you let your dog ride loose in the car, you run the risk into problems outside of the heat exposure, but, um, the big no-no is having a dog ride on your lap. The last thing you want to do is have your dog ride on your lap while you're driving. I think that's even more dangerous than texting. Uh, having your dog in the front seat, uh, sitting next to you if you have airbags, if not disconnected, that airbag can come out and really do some serious injuries to your dog if they're not belted in as well. And riding in the back is the safest place to go. Uh, but again, if you can use a crate, that would be my priority, secondary back seat and they one more thing that they do make is they make these screens that sit in your window so you open them up but again they only allow the window to open up this much and you want to make sure the dog has plenty of flow so far at the time we've been doing this the temperature has gone up to 105 degrees in my producer's car and again if that even that with the windows cracked open it's going to be very very dangerous to your dog and you're running your risk of losing your the, your companion so your best bet to recap is if you're going out to do errands leave your dog at home i know we love having them with us but it's not always the best bet to do if you have a service dog that needs to ride with you have them protect your dog by having it crated in an airline crate or you can get aluminum solid aluminum crate that's another way to go it stays cooler uh, i know when you take your dog when you drive somewhere you take your dog with you to get him out to be a service dog but while you're driving it can be safe and you don't have to get this 
big crate, it depends on the size of your dog. If you're a companion dog, I recommend considering crating your dog for safety issues. If not, make sure the dog's not riding with his head out the window. Uh, you wouldn't let that happen to your child. Uh, you can run the risk of an injury, eye injury, or something else happening. And you wouldn't leave your child in the car. As a matter of fact, it's illegal to leave your child in the car when you go into a store. Uh, so why shouldn't it be illegal to leave your dog in the car with the windows up as well? So you think air conditioning is the best way to go? Have you thought about the possibility that your filter systems for your air conditioning could be clogged? If you're traveling with dogs, you know what it's like. You have a lot of dog here in your vehicle. Make sure that you check your filters for your air conditioning unit so you're not clogging the ventilation system to work properly. Another thing is you show your exhaust system in good shape. If you shut your car up and leave your car running, how do you know if you don't check your exhaust system, if you're not sure, that you're not putting carbon monoxide in your vehicle? And the other thing is be sure that you check your gas. Make sure that your um, gas gauge has enough fuel. The last thing you want to do is leave your car running where you go into the shop and have your, your car stall and uh, have the dog sitting in the car with all the windows shut and you're not prepared for that. Another tip is if you are somewhere and you're going to be leaving your air conditioning running while you're at an event, at a dog event, and your dog's in the car and you want to cool them off, open your hood will helps keep the engine cool and stop some overheating and having the car shut down on you again without you being aware of it. Folks, they're only with us for a very short time. They depend on us to, to help them and stay safe. They depend on us for everything. We brought them into our life. Let's take care of them because folks, at the end of the day, it's all about the dogs. Thank you for joining us.